and we are live. All right, thank you. Um, welcome to the November meeting of the Norwalk Bike Walk Commission. And the agenda, if you don't already have a copy, is available on the city's website. Um, our first order of business is public input. I do not see any members of the public present. So I think- Nancy, can I make a, uh, a statement as a member of the public? Uh, sure. Um, I'm not sure I, if it may be a conflict of interest for me to do this as a, as a um, commissioner, a commissioner, a commission member. Okay. Um, I, so I want to provide a little bit of public input about zoning um, and as it relates to biking and walking. So uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been working on uh, getting a shed so that I can store my bicycles. Um, I'm trying to get around via bicycle as much as possible. And um, this will surprise none of you, but I've run into zoning issues doing that. Um, in particular, I, I live in a condo complex that's got about 13 units and there's a small parking lot and the units uh, based on the bylaws in the HOA are each assigned one or two parking spots. My unit has two, but I only have one car between me and my wife. And so I wanted to, I proposed that I put a shed in the other parking spot. Um, now, the, the, to make a long story short, the HOA was okay with it, and I took it to the, the zoning people to get a permit, and they said, because of parking minimums, you cannot put a shed in the parking spot. And I said, well, I don't have a car to park there. Like, it's just going to sit unused. And they're like, well, that doesn't matter. So um, I would like to, at the very least, uh, formally complain to the, the city body that I'm most familiar with here in the Bike Walk Commission um, that zoning should be more flexible, especially around um, the, you know, making it easier for people to live, um, and, and get around in the way that they choose to. And in some cases, that's because that's the only thing that's financially feasible to them. Um, in my particular case, like I would like to have a shed so that I can store my bicycles and they don't sit outside and rust. Um, but the, the city has said, well, you can't do that in a parking spot because we need to keep that available and free, I guess for, you know, when I move out, somebody else moves in, that needs to be unobstructed so that they can have room to park their cars there. But, you know, cars aren't the only way to get around. And uh, if we have, as a public, as a city said that a, a development has to have a certain number of parking spots, you know, what, why, why shoehorn the transportation into uh, one mode when other modes not only are possible, but also, you know, have, fewer negative externalities on society. Yeah, because I, I would assume if you wanted to park a motorcycle there, that would be fine. Yeah, a motorcycle, a car. You know, I could park a car that's larger than the shed. I could <laughs> even put a shipping container, and that's part of my argument, again, like as I was corresponding. I can drop a shipping container there and leave it there for as long as I like, and there's zoning has no issue with that, but I can't put a prefabricated shed because that is a structure. Ah. And in fact, I might, I, I'm not sure how much my wife would appreciate this, but uh, I've been toying with the idea of actually putting a shipping container there just to make the point. Yeah. Um, Greg, not, not to put you on the spot, but um, since you do partially report to planning and zoning, is this yes. something that you could look into on our behalf or would you rather someone um, else do that? I can look into it. I'm not going to say that I'm an expert in zoning um, <laughs> because I hear the things that go on in my office all day. And, you know, it's a lot of legalities that go into it, um, especially for depending on where, you know, where the condo is. And I know parking is always a major issue. Uh, even when new developments come in, uh, they try to under, you know, under undervalue the parking spaces. And even if they've already striped the parking, the parking lot, they have to redo it all over again. Um, so I will talk to them and, and see, I mean, they're the ones, they're the experts. They, they know what they're doing. They deal with hundreds of cases on a daily basis. So, um, but I will talk and discuss and see what they say. I mean, I'm not guaranteeing anything. So sure. um, it's outside, it's outside of my, my realm or expertise. So, well, I mean, I'll, you, yeah, I'll I play mean, the middle guy if you want, but. Okay, or would you be more comfortable with somebody else taking that up with uh, Steve? I mean, you you could CC me, um, and I can give him a heads up. 
about okay. it. Um, if you want to send Steve an email, I'm, you know, I'm, per, I'm sure Tanner, you've already talked to the zoning officers about it. Um, yeah, I've just been it, corresponding with the, the email address that's posted on the website that deals with permits. I'm not sure exactly who's gotcha. on the other end of that, but I imagine it's not Steve. Yeah, no, it's, it's probably not, but it's one of the zoning officers who, who directly report to Steve. Um, I mean, if, if you want to send him an email and you could CC me and say, you brought this up at the, you know, bike commission meeting and you've already dealt with the zoning officers um, and, you know, kind of go from there. Uh, that that's fine. Um, but I can give him a heads up uh, before, uh, you know, I'll give him a heads up tomorrow that you're going to be uh, sending him an email and I'm, I'm sure the zoning officers will fill them in as well. Um, as, if, as far as uh, they've already dealt with the issue. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, why don't, why don't I send Steve a, an email and I'll copy you, Greg, and I'll copy uh, you Tanner as well. Um, Perfect. And great. would I be correct in, in uh, if in fact you were permitted to put this thing up in your parking space that when you move out, you would disassemble it and take it away so that if a two car family moved into your unit, they would have the two spaces available to them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to at least leave the option open to sell the shed to the next people if sure. they're interested. But yeah, it would be constructed in a way that's temporary enough that it can it can mm -hmm. be taken down like that yeah. was part of the deal i struck with the hoa yeah okay all right i will i will take care of that and yeah. uh, and just cc me nancy and i'll give steve a heads up on it okay and we have since since we started um we had to have a member of the public um matt wagelin who um, i had a conversation with last week who is interested in learning more about the bike walk commission and uh perhaps uh, helping us out as needed. Um, Matt, did you want to say anything? Or can, can, uh, can I Matt have speak? to promote him to a panelist? Do you want me to do that? Uh, if you don't mind. Thank you. Matt, can you hear us? I can hear you. Yes, I was frantically having a moment of panic there where I was going, I don't have any buttons to push. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, no, my name is Matt Wagley and I'm a, a father of two. Uh, my wife and I have been in Norwalk for a good long time. Uh, our kids are over at Brookside. We ride our bikes around town a bunch. Um, I'm uh, indoor now for the winter. Uh, but uh, I'll usually you know, do between 10 and 15 miles a day when the weather's nice, riding around most of Norwalk, Row 8 and Darien, Westport, wherever, basically wherever I can go uh, in between meetings on uh, Google Hangouts now is what I, I like to do. So uh, seeing all kinds of roads and all kinds of behavior and uh, it's, been a, it's been an interesting year, a, a couple of years riding around this town, so yeah. That's it, all that's right. all I got. <laughs> all right, thanks, Matt. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the uh, approval of the October 5th minutes. Could I have someone move to accept them? Okay, Judd, and we need a second. Nancy. Okay, Sam. Nancy, I had a, a, a small correction in the minutes. Okay. Um, uh, in the NRVT section, the third paragraph, um, third line, um, with the trail was conceived as only being four foot wide instead of eight feet like the rest of the trail. Uh, the rest of the trail's 10 feet. Okay, thanks. That was my mistake. Any other additions or corrections? If not, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Yeah. Opposed? All right, thank you very much. And now the chair's report. I did have a few attachments to the chair's report. Um, the first one is um, two links to two job postings that went up, I believe, last week. Um, as you know, um, Catherine, retired as the director of TMP. 
And so that position is vacant and the city has advertised it and hopefully we'll be filling it um, the, I believe it's the end of November that uh, people need to apply. So presumably we could have somebody on board early uh, 2021. And uh, the city also has posted Mike Yosek's position, um, which is the director of transportation. Um, he is planning to move back to DPW because they lost a number of senior engineers. And uh, the feeling was that um, DPW probably needed Mike's skills more than TMP. And um, that has the same time frame. Um, the other attachment is the ordinance that created this commission because it occurred to me there are a number of you who are relatively new to the commission who may never have seen uh, the ordinance. And if you haven't already read it, when you get a chance to read it, um, it should sound very familiar to you, like it should sound very similar to our strategic plan because the um, seven goals for our strategic plan are taken directly from the ordinance. And you'll notice that one of the things that we're supposed to be doing is reporting to the Common Council annually. And in the past, I have reported to the Health and Public Safety Committee, um, usually in June or July, because I use as the basis for my report uh, the review we do at the end of the fiscal year of our, of our strategic plan. Um, due to COVID, that was one of the many things that sort of got sidelined over the late spring and summer. And I did uh, appear before them two weeks ago and uh, presented uh, how we did on our strategic plan in the previous fiscal year. And then I also gave them uh, a copy of our strategic plan for the current fiscal year. And that's when it occurred to me that many of you may not have seen the ordinance, so I thought I'd slip it in here. Um, we have um, finally gotten the um, safety card that we've been working on for several months. Um, and I can sort of, well, I guess I can't really put it up here. Um, it's um, two-sided as we had planned, and it's on a nice, heavy, glossy stock. And I have delivered 300 of them to the library. The South Norwalk Library took 100 and the main library on Belden took 200. And uh, those of you that have picked books up at the library uh, since they reopened or partially reopened um, may have noticed that from time to time when you pick up the bag with your books in it, it also has some other information. So they are going to be distributing the safety card along with uh, the books that people pick up. I did just pick up a book today and I did not get a safety card in it. <laughs> but I have one that I'm gonna probably pick up later in the week. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, also, thanks to uh, Christine's contact with Mary Oster, um, I just delivered today 40 copies for the um, for her um, preschool program. And she mentioned to me that uh, she puts together a, sort of a little goodie bag every August for the kids that are starting kindergarten. And she said, if we would like, she would be happy to do that. Obviously it won't be until next August um, and that she can have them printed so we would not have to pay for the printing. So I told her I would ask the commission if they would like her to do that and I, felt that the answer to that would probably be yes, because I can't imagine why we would not want her to do that. But um, if anybody has any thoughts on that, this would be a good time to speak up. Not hearing a, a thunder of people, um, I will tell Mary that that would be perfectly fine with us and I'll put it in my tickler to contact her early in August and remind her that she offered to do that for us. Um, also, thanks to Christine, uh, one of her students has translated the safety card into Spanish. And Mary said she would take 30 of the cards in Spanish right now. And my question is, before it goes to the printer, uh, we need once again to know how many we should order. 
So I would ask you all to put your thinking caps on about groups that might want the card in Spanish. And while you're at it, if you think of any other avenues to distribute the cards uh, in English, that would be good too. And uh, if anybody has uh, any ideas right now, I'd be happy to jot them down. Uh, Nancy, uh, I'm sorry, my camera's not working. It's Christine, but uh, maybe the Housing Authority, Mark Housing Authority. Okay. They have some after school programs they run too. Okay, thank you. And the Carver Center. Okay. Nancy, I was thinking maybe through Norwalk Acts. Thank you. They have a lot of events and they, uh, there may be some events coming up where those copies would be, could be handed out. Be okay. But Audrey, what was that? Where? Uh, there is a, uh, an, an organization in Norwalk called Norwalk Acts, A-C-T-S. Okay. And they, uh, they are very instrumental in helping the school system and um, other, uh, I guess groups that are, are working for diversity uh, and actually you can find them online, Norwalk, Norwalk Act, um, very active in our community, um, helping out with uh, a lot of educational and um, underserved community. Yeah, actually I probably should, I was going to wait to introduce Audrey, but since she's popped up, um, Audrey is the brand new co-chair of the pedestrian committee and she's been working very hard on a grant that's due next week, which she'll be talking about a little bit later. So uh, we're very happy to have her on board. Okay, um, and the last thing I have is if you remember last May, we were scurrying around to try to spend whatever money we could out of our budget. And um, we have purchased some crosswalk signs, um, so a bike rack and a, a bicycle repair station. And we uh, now need to figure out where to put them. So um, I was hoping I might be able to get uh, maybe two or three people who would like to put our heads together and uh, see if we can figure out where to put them. So um, is there anybody that would be interested in helping me out with that? Don't all volunteer at once here. Okay, Gary, thank you. I can help you with that, Nancy. Uh, Colin? <clears throat> and Sam, I saw Sam. <laughs> oh, Sam, sorry. What kind of a repair stand, Nancy? Um, it's, do you, you know the one that's over by, um, I don't know the right name, I think it's called Southport Beach. Um, if you're on route. Oh, yep. Okay. It's, it's a, like that. Yeah. Is it a Dero? I think that's who makes that. I don't know, but you could ask Mike, Mike Yosak. Okay. Cause I, I have like not actually seen it. And, um, when we were scurrying around, he found a catalog and found one that looked good and ordered it. So <laughs> that's about all I know about it. All righty. Thank you very much. And that takes care of uh, my report. Nancy, quick follow-up question. Yep. Um, this is on the, the job posting. Um, any reason that we couldn't share those job postings publicly? I, no, I found them on the website. Yeah, they are public. Okay. So if, if you know anybody, please feel free. Yeah, I have somebody in mind. All righty. So that brings us to standing reports. And Greg, you're up. All right. Um, so going to the, you know, connectivity grant is still being reviewed by the state uh, along the east west section along Route 136. Uh, as we talked about, the money for the grant has already been allocated. So just bear with us as we continue to work with them. Um, the Highland Ave Safe Routes to School project um, still in final design phase. Uh, we were able to meet and go over a few more things. So the, the it is progressing in the final design phase. Uh, and like we discussed, the money is still allocated for the project. So it's just a matter of getting the design finalized and, and moving forward with it. Last month, uh, we had our bike plan group uh, met regarding Seaview Avenue 
Um, very informative uh, meeting, uh, had some good discussions. Um, so we presented um, another kind of level for the uh, an updated presentation uh, regarding Seaview and updated designs for traffic calming and approved pedestrian and bike facilities. Uh, as you know, we've been discussing this for a few months now. We are progressing this uh, as fast as we can um, within reason, of course. Um, now, uh, the project improvements will cover East Avenue to First Street on Seaview Avenue, including the two intersections and also in, in the middle, um, accommodating sidewalks on, on uh, both intersections. Um, and we're putting together an outreach plan right now at the moment for the adjacent property owners uh, to hear their feedback as well and get them to sign on to the project and hear any comments back from them. Uh, we also met with Steve Kleppen uh, about the East Norwalk TOD plan uh, as the promenade, as you, I don't know if everybody has read that, but the promenade plan for uh, Steve Avenue uh, along Vets Park uh, that runs from Four Point to about Osborne Ave and then kind of comes to a halt. So our plan is to kind of connect the two projects uh, so that the entire length of Seaview Avenue uh, has updated facilities for uh, pedestrians and traffic timing measures as well. Um, like I said before, we took a lot of comments and suggestions from the commissioners. Uh, everybody was very positive about it, um, but we'll take in all the, all the discussed uh, uh, comments and we'll discuss it at our next project meeting. Um, we haven't met uh, since the meeting, uh, our last meeting. So we'll, uh, the, the team will meet um, between now and our next meeting and uh, kind of go from there. So um, that's, uh, pretty much, that's pretty much it for as far as updates for you guys. Okay, thanks, Greg. Does anybody Greg, have any I, questions? Yeah, I have a yeah. question. Colin? Yes. Um, Greg, in terms of the final design for Highland, yes. Um, is there any uh, any progress that we can see on that? Um, on f I don't have, so the everything is right now in CAD with the drafter up in DPW right now. Um, so I don't have anything formally on, um, on, on paper that I can, that I can show. Mm -hmm. um, but we can, we can get you, um, I can put together maybe a quick, uh, a quick, uh, out, outline of the project, maybe, um, that, you know, that we discussed. I know we had presented about a year ago. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a long time out at this point. No, I, I think, know. I think it would yeah. just be nice to update people as to where it is. Um, yeah, no, we can, I can put down. a quick, uh, I can put a quick little thing together and just kind of show, um, just where, you know, the updates that are going. Uh, and where they're specifically going and um, we can we can put something together for everybody. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, you, you could probably do that for our December meeting. Oh, absolutely, yeah, that's plenty of time, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, of course, yep. Anybody else have any questions or comments for Greg? No, thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Judd with the Bike Plan Committee. Uh, I just the last two or three meetings have been consumed with uh, Seaview Avenue, which Greg always covers before me. So I don't, <laughs> I don't really have anything new to say because that's okay. what we've been focused on uh, just over the winter. Uh, I think I said it last month, but I, you know, hope to meet with Colin and Sam, Tanner, Gary, and. Uh, you know, map out some new bike routes in relation to the paving schedule. So, okay, good. Yeah, and and as I reminded you, I think at the last meeting too, the strategic plan uh, has taking a look at where we need more bicycle parking in, um, be, besides in Tanner's parking lot, <laughs> um, in the, around the city. So that's something we probably don't want to lose sight of either. Okay. okay. Thank you, Barbara. Events. <laughs> I will give you my usual report. Yeah. Events. Okay. Well, I do. I also do have. Um, we ordered uh, 700 of the safety cards, and um, once I think I'm done distributing them to other organizations, I will leave the rest of them in our closet at the health department. So we are ready to distribute them if we have a, another, or when we have another event. Um, also, if you could think about um, 
based on the pamphlets that we hand out in Spanish and English about what the ratio of Spanish to English is. So I know how many Spanish uh, safety cards to order for the commission. That would be good. Either that or just pull a number out of a hat and let me know. <laughs> well, I have been and it's been uh, 200 English and 300 Spanish in the events we've been at. Oh, okay. And kind of the ratio. All right, so you would like, you'll have at least 300 English, so I should order 200 Spanish for the commission as well. I, I'm not, where are you going to be distributing them? This, um, I have already distributed the English ones to the library and to the early childhood education program. Early childhood could use more Spanish than the library, I bet. Well, um, the parents. Yeah. The, the, the problem with the library is it's, I, I suppose if somebody orders a book in Spanish, then you would know they probably would like the safety card in Spanish. But otherwise, I think it's kind of hard to know which patrons would like Spanish and which patrons would like English. I agree. Because um, I did ask Sherelle in two different emails if she would like any Spanish and she hasn't answered that question yet. But Mary must know the ratio. And her oh order. Mary, yeah, Mary has put in an order. Oh, okay. All right, thank you very much. Jim, Norwalk River Valley Trail. So on our two construction uh, uh, pending projects, uh, first and perhaps importantly, or at least of the greatest interest, is uh, the missing link that is out to bid. Um, bids are due back uh, later this month. Uh, Mike is uh, on the point for that, and we're excited to uh, see what comes um, out the pipeline. So we're on target and um, moving as expected there. Uh, secondly is Will Walk. Um, as you know, that is um, coordinated through the town of uh, Wilton, and uh, I'm pleased to report that all the uh, formal administrative um, um, checkpoints have been met. And so we are now into the bid document preparation for uh, Will Walk. So um, after uh, many months of kind of being hung up, we are uh, proceeding toward getting shovels in the ground. Um, a couple other points that I'd like to touch on briefly because they uh, relate to uh, the commission. Um, so as a part of the, um, I guess I'll call it um, celebration or the ribbon cutting on the missing link, um, we're really going to be trying to draw a lot of attention um, to the opening of the trail and in turn we'll be directing people up and down the trail to the beach and to the aquarium. And so we, uh, so it's obviously important to make sure the uh, trail is um, up to stuff and updated and, and uh, we're working on a number of small projects to, um, to um, have us in the best possible shape come uh, this summer whenever the missing link uh, opens. There are three particular spots on the uh, on-road section of the trail from Cat Pasture Beach to the aquarium that uh, I'd like to just um, draw your attention uh, to because uh, obviously they're on the street and uh, they obviously relate to the Bike Walk Commission. And um, while I don't think we have time for really uh, extended discussion on those, I wanted to make you uh, aware of those and so that we can give them attention as we go forward. First is to at Cap Pasture Beach. Uh, as you probably know, uh, the Gardella project there, which is kind of been holding up activity uh, on capital projects uh, at the beach is still on hold. And it's at least unclear to me as to when that's going to shake loose. Um, but since we're going to be directing bikers to the to the uh, park, uh, I think we need to consider some sort of uh, interim um, uh, near-term 
and midterm solution to deal with uh, light traffic coming into the park. So we have thoughts about how that lane could be um, um, managed and, and it should be applied. And I've had discussions with uh, Nancy and we've taken that to parks and recs. So understanding what the best solutions um, uh, are is um, uh, th those are underway. Um, so we'll build and elaborate on those as, as we go. The second area to touch on briefly is the uh, rotary, the Ludlow uh, rotary that's kind of at the head of Gregory Boulevard. Uh, as you head south um, from Fifth and then on to uh, Beach Road toward the park, uh, the, the crosswalk situation uh, is just fine for that. Uh, but northbound, getting across um, Gregory fundamentally and around the rotary, rotary is problematic. So we need to work on um, a safer solution to get a uh, bicyclist across um, uh, Gregory and around the rotary. So we've had some preliminary discussions with, uh, with Mike in that regard. I think we'll want to involve Greg and whomever um, to consider what our options are. And the third area of um, importance is, uh, it is what I'll call Greater Seaview, which really run, in my mind, runs from um, uh, first, first and Cove, in effect from Partners all the way to, to Fort Point. And uh, that's clearly already been talked about uh, tonight, and I know uh, Judd's on it, and um, um, uh, we want to join you, we meaning NRV, want to join you in um, um, contributing what we can to help making that reality. And if the greater vision that's there is uh, time-wise beyond the, uh, uh, the, the scope of time available for the NRVT, we would like to talk about what's the best interim solutions that could be available to us in um, summer of next year to uh, help ensure uh, safe passage through that um, hopefully congested and potentially confusing area. So I just wanted uh, the commission to be aware those are three spots that we have mutual interest in and uh, we'd like to work with you and support you in what ways we can to get uh, the best possible solutions workable by our summer NRVT grand opening. Thanks, Jim. Do, 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 do um, all of the commissioners know the areas that Jim is talking about? Okay. I couldn't, I couldn't hear when he was discussing, uh, Jim, when you were saying from, from partners on Cove Street to blank, you, you broke up right there. Sorry, in effect, all the way to Fort Point. I mean, okay. so how, how we deal with uh, the transit of that area, fundamentally with bicycles, pedestrians, I think it's easier. You can shuffle off to the park or to a sidewalk and be mm -hmm. safe, but bike yeah. bikers are in peril. Thank you. Okay, and, and that is, um, part of that is the area that uh, Greg and Judd were talking about earlier, but um, it extends obviously be beyond East Avenue. All right, thanks very much, Jim. Uh, next up is uh, Audrey for the Pedestrian Committee. Audrey. Hi, everyone. I, I recognize a number of folks on this, on this uh, call uh, from the Pedestrian Committee and uh, also my friend Tanner who uh, we were involved with uh, traffic safety issues uh, about a year, a little over a year ago. And uh, these, these commissions and committees seem to be better poised to uh, address things like uh, uh, traffic calming and sidewalks and being able to move about our city safely. Um, yes, I am working uh, right now on um, a grant application from America Walks. It's called their Community Change Grant. It's not a very, large grant, it's about $1,500. Uh, and, um, you know, I wanna thank Christine for her input um, uh, for the Norwalk River Valley Trail. Um, I have my eye on a, on a bigger grant, 
possibly where that that will work. Um, the, so basically, I, I ended up having many, many conversations uh, and gathered a lot of good information and input, uh, ranging from some nonprofits uh, in our area to Common Council members, and including our chair of the Common Council and um, the head, executive director of our housing authority, uh, because the this particular grant um, seeks to bring together uh, the underserved community uh, and different constituencies um, to bring uh, to increase physical activity and active active transportation in a specific community, to cross engage people and organizations newer to the efforts of walking and moving and walkability. Uh, to demonstrate a culture of anti-racism and inclusive health and design and support and cultivate connected, active, and deeply engaged communities. So with that in mind, um, also looking at uh, something unique, uh, we, we came up with an idea over at Oak Hills Park as a project site. Oak Hills Park has a level oval walking path, which is on the Norwalker program through our health department. It, according to the master plan for Oak Hills Park, it will include an, uh, a pollinator friendly meadow. So this walking path is designed to meander in and out of meadow. Uh, and so what we're looking at for this grant is to have funds to establish a meadow. It took four years of, of continued mowing <laughs> to keep invasive plants from seeding. So this spring is actually the time to start establishing a pollinator friendly meadow. So uh, the, the intertwining of the creation of a meadow uh, with promoting the, the, the walkability there and transportation. So some of the funds would be used for transportation for those who don't have access uh, to transportation to walk in nature. Um, when I talk to a lot of the nonprofit groups, including the NAACP and a few other places, um, and the housing authority, lower income families, as well as seniors, lower income seniors, um, are two populations that have uh, less access to transportation. And everyone said the same thing. It's so important to be out in nature. That kept coming up again and again. So it seems like this combination of the health of the environment by, it's actually restoring, this meadow will restore what was a, a dumping ground, we found out, by sticking in some shovels and pulling up all kinds of old construction debris. So this is a restoration project for the health of our environment, which of course helps us, and also for the health, you know, the health that we derive, the benefit of, of walking and this combination with the more underserved community um, seems like a, a, everybody agrees is sort of the, the winning combination. So um, that one, that grant is due on the 9th. So we're, we're working uh, to get that moving. There's also uh, another, I think, exciting grant uh, possibility through AARP. Uh, AARP has a, um, a livable communities initiative with a grant uh, last year they gave out, or this year actually 2020, they gave out $2.4 million in grants to communities uh, all over the United States. Uh, and there's a, a range of, of ideas for projects and they, one of them in particular for us is deliver a range of transportation and mobility options by increasing connectivity, walkability, bikeability, wayfinding, and access to a wider range of transportation choices, among other things. Um, I was thinking maybe NRVT um, might be a good uh, possibility because it's about con connectivity, wayfinding, uh, sort of tying together that whole trail. So I'd love to talk to NRVT a little bit more um, just to see what kinds of needs are are, are needed. <laughs> um, in addition to the, to the grants, um, the pedestrian committee also just uh, received results um, from our walking survey. And um, I was just looking today at the, at the many comments, I would say, you know, to, to Greg uh, Paselli, uh, some of the things he talked about, 
the two big areas of concern for people in our community, we had over, uh, about 400 responses, which was really good for this survey, sidewalks, uh, the condition of sidewalks and availability of sidewalks and traffic calming seem to be the, the hot topics. Uh, we can share more, but I just wanted to let you know. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is that there's a petition uh, right now through the East Norwalk Neighborhood Association uh, about the TOD, the Transit Oriented Development Plan for East, East Norwalk, and in particular, a, um, a warehouse uh, distribution center where they, there will be uh, projected 198 uh, trucks going in and out of Strawberry Hill area. And the residents are, are up in arms and uh, people are very worried about walkability and bikeability, which is just beginning to kind of take off in that area or be supported. And they're very concerned about losing that. So just wanted to let you know, there's uh, over 700 people that have signed that petition in East Norwalk. So um, a lot of things bubbling up, very exciting. To be specific, the petition is against the distribution center specifically? Yeah, I would say it's against it. It's it's pretty well put together. I can send you the link um, and uh, uh, the comments. Again, there are many, many comments which are very interesting to read and people are very, uh, they wanna hold on to the walking and biking and safety for kids getting to school. That's another big topic. So sure. uh, you see the same thing circulating again and again and again, sidewalks, traffic calming, biking, walking, um, that kind of thing, so. One other follow-up question. How many responses did we get to the survey? Uh, about four, a little over 400. So not bad, not bad. Um, seemed to really hit a lot of people in East Norwalk. I think that's sort of the hot spot right now. <laughs> a lot of the comments were, uh, so I'm happy to share that with you. Now, if, if you'd like, um, if you remind me, we can um, attach the link to the survey results and the comments uh, to the agenda for December. That would be great. And, and Nancy, um, you and I had talked, the, this Grant Through America uh, walks over at Oak Hills Park. Uh, there are two, two, um, uh, two contact people needed um, on that. One to help with digital, they call digital media documentation. And I thought of Barbara McCabe with her, her videos, but basically, uh, looking for somebody <laughs> to document uh, progress. And uh, so it's something that America Walks can share. You know, God willing, we'll get the, we'll get the grant. So we're looking for somebody to help with documentation uh, and also uh, social media promotion. And that might be Josh Morgan, perhaps through the city. It needs to get spread kind of far and wide that um, you know, make it visible this project and invite the whole community to this little gem. You know, Oak Hills Park has this um, golf, public golf course and most people think of it as a golf course, but we, were, we protected 11 and a half acres of uh, woodlands and uh, open space. So it's really unique uh, here in Norwalk, real gem. Yeah, I think the, the uh, videography would really just involve uh, coming to one of the events we would have at the park and uh, filming, I, I will guess from the back since we don't want to identify people, um, the people that, that came and, and just walking around and, and highlighting the features of right. the path itself. So it's uh, not a whole lot of heavy lifting. Ex uh, exactly, yeah. I mean, we want to hold some events uh, so that it isn't just uh, droves of people coming in. Uh, my guess is next spring and summer, we'll probably still have some effects of the pandemic uh, so we would want to coordinate, um, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, we just put in for the grant and just, you know, we don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah. Well, and, and as far as uh, social media, um, people on this call may have some additional ideas, but in, in the past, we have partnered with the, the city and uh, leveraged its existing social media, as well as the health department, as well as uh, Rec and Parks. Yes. Um, in addition to our own social media. So uh, if people have uh, ideas of additional social media, we might be able to leverage. Um, if you could let Audrey know or let me know, that would be great. Yeah, I, I think we'll get a lot of coverage because this, in, this really pairs us up with uh, a city, first a city park, the pollinator pathway, the housing authority, uh, the Norwalker program of the health department, 
uh, and um, tra maybe transportation mobility and parking and DPW. We don't know. There's actually a lot of potential mm -hmm. for um, many constituencies coming together. And that's really what it's, it takes a village and uh, even the, the village idiot. <laughs> we want to bring everybody, as many uh, constituencies together as possible. Just a, a couple of quick things. You mentioned the NRVT. And so I'll count on Nancy to get me your contact information so you and I can uh, exchange. Uh, and second thing, uh, I guess I had a question I'll direct it or open it to anybody, which is the warehouse. I, I'm an East Norwalker. Um, so this warehouse indeed has gotten considerable discussion. Uh, does anybody know if this is, it's hard for me to imagine that this is part of the TOD. It always gets lumped together with that discussion, but does anybody know if, if somehow that's a component? Because I support the TOD and I find this warehouse kind of in conflict with all of the principles that the TOD speaks toward. So anybody yeah. know? Yeah, the um, East Norwalk TOD, um, I believe it's within a mile of the, or maybe it's a half a mile, but it's either a half mile or a mile of the uh, East Norwalk train station. So I don't think it would include the proposed site for the warehouse. Okay. I, I, I think that's you know, probably an important thing for people to recognize because mm -hmm. I've heard it uh, spoken by numerous people that say, I, I'm against this TOD thing and I'm going to make noise because I hate the idea of this warehouse. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I speak on that just for a brief sure, second? Um, I don't know a, a lot about the proposal, but I'm familiar with the parcel because I was involved in the, um, the initial zoning approval for the Avalon project there. That's a leftover industrial parcel, as you probably know from the Norden, uh, company. Yes. Um, which is why the street is called Norden Place. Yeah, which is why the street is called Norden Place. So it's, um, unfortunately, it's a bad zoning remnant. So I mean, regardless of the TOD, it's, uh, it's an approved use for the site. So y you've got somebody that's trying to use it as what it's approved for. And the people, I, I personally, I think rightfully being upset at the use because it's not a good use for a neighborhood, but it is what's permitted and nobody's changed that. And when people have proposed other uses, uh, um, Mr. Mushak is, uh, is definitely on the record, you know, contrasting the East Norwalk Association and some others with um, comments that people have fought previous attempts at development of that parcel for less intense uses but i mean it is what it is at this point and unless we fight to change it to something better uh we're we may get stuck with it and it'll be horrible um but it, you know it's a complicated thing uh, but it, I, as far as i know i don't think it's part of the tod intentionally yeah I, I can confirm that with uh steve in the email i'm going to write to him um about tanner's issue and also suggest to him um, if it's outside the TOD uh, that it would be probably helpful as Jim suggested to make sure the public understands that those two are totally separate issues. Yeah. I, yeah, I, was, I, I, would, I would agree. Yeah, I was just looking at the, the petition. I don't see the language TOD in there. So it does seem to be, well, you know, they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. You know, there are efforts right now all around the country to take parking lots and turn them back into paradise. So that I would root for restoration and open space there. <laughs> well, I'd root for most anything besides <laughs> a, a, a high traffic warehouse. Um, and and, and, and I have, College Point is a, is a good one, um, perhaps beyond the scope of this commission. But uh, yes, with the, there's uh, too often we've uh, rejected in, in, in any kind of, of positive development. And so um, um, there's been a lot of crying wolf and, uh, and things that maybe weren't a wolf. And now a real live wolf is at our doorstep and we aren't getting quite the, the, the recognition that I, I, I think we should. Okay, well, thank you all for uh, your comments. 
And uh, moving on, Christine, do you have anything to report for safety and education? Uh, not really, but I just wanted to follow up on our um, our talk about, let's see, it might have been about six, seven months ago about the League of American Bicyclists becoming a member and also applying for the Bike Friendly American City, um, that application. And I remember um, Kathy and Greg were talking and they said not, not yet. And um, I think they said wait till the a certain time. And I just wanted to kind of weigh back in on that circle back. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, okay. yeah, so, so yeah, so Christine, so going through the application, we were going to wait until we had our complete street policy um, implemented and Vision Zero uh, initiatives both up and going because that puts us in a, uh, you know, kind of the, a better eye uh, in the, you know, as far as a, a ranking is concerned. Um, without those, we would get a lower one. Uh, so we are, we still are in the process currently right now, uh, putting together uh, the complete streets policy and getting that policy up to the common council and getting that through. Um, so that would give us a better ranking. So until we get those uh, that and vision zero up and going, uh, I would say we hold off until then. Um, you know, obviously COVID didn't really help and, you know, everybody, you know, this moving, moving around, not to use that as an excuse, but. Um, we still are in the process of it, and we still have a lot of the documentation that we're preparing for the Common Council right now uh, as we speak. So uh, once that is implemented, we'll go from there. Okay, Greg, and um, Judy Archer, before she retired, was processing yes. the uh, application for membership, and I did forward you her the information last week or the week before. Were you able yes. to find out where that is? Uh, I'm still in the process of that because I don't know if it was done or not because um, I never got that email that so the one that you had sent me you know to fill out all the information I never got that one until you sent it to me and I don't know if it was already taken care of before you left or not and I'm still trying to get to the bottom of it um, to see if it was actually paid for and, and done or not so uh, I have to find that out. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I'll, I'll find out and shoot you an email and keep you posted on that. Okay, because I, I yeah. believe she sent a requisition to accounting for the, okay. the money part. Okay. All right. I'll have to, well, I'm already trying to get more stuff from them. So, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll try to get as much as possible. <laughs> All right. Th thanks a lot, Greg. So, yeah, no, but you'll find out sooner rather than later. Um, okay. About that. So, and, and Christine, keep reminding us every couple of months. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's good news, and I thank you, Greg. But um, yep. I didn't have anything else for the report. Um, I just uh, want to point out, as um, if I don't, if I can, I'm sorry to take my uh, airtime here for this. But uh, as a cyclist, and I, I live in East Norwalk too, and I'm on the other end of the Strawberry Hill, and there was the um, paving done on Westport Avenue in that intersection, but. It's, be, it's gotten a little dangerous now for a cyclist because the two lanes now, the right lane is right lane only. So the bike um, lane, you know, all the way down Strawberry Hill, it's great. And then you're coming up to that intersection. And if a cyclist is not paying attention, they're still in that far right lane wherein they used to be able to go straight or make a right and they cannot go straight or make a right. I mean, they can only make a right now. So I, I just... Uh, I don't know. I was a little surprised uh, when I was on my bike down there recently. So yeah, I haven't been there um, since the paving, but um, there were sharrows at the intersection before on Strawberry Hill. There are no longer sharrows there. They're not. I don't. They're not right at the. It like at the front, like in the at that intersection. It's behind. It's in the back. It's, it's back before the intersection. Right. So it's just a little tricky. It's a little dicey right now. And um, I don't know. It's a, it's a very busy intersection. There might okay, be but it, it's, it's different than it was before? Yeah, yeah. They, they revised a bunch of stuff in that area, Nancy. That, that I, I, I think um, Christine's point is, uh, is that they changed the traffic pattern so that the, the, what was a straight and right lane is now just a right turn only. So when you come out the bike lane in the Sharrow, you're no longer in a straight and right, you're in a, a right. 
And oh, if gotcha. you go straight, you have to get across to the left lane, which doesn't really make sense. Um, and then they also widened the, the road uh, to provide a center turn lane to the- Right, that I knew. To the west of that. Okay. Um, Greg, is that something that you could look at, look into for us? Yes. Yeah, I can, I can definitely look into that. Um, I would assume that it was the state that put those plans, uh, together cause it was route one. Uh, obviously they had to go into strawberry Hill, uh, but I'll, I'll find out, um, you know, what, what they exactly they changed by looking at the previous, uh, uh, pictures and going from there. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I'm the new guy here, but, um, same exact problem on Route 1 in Darien. In fact, that's part of the reason why I was interested in this because I almost got killed by a, a dump truck uh, in this exact situation. Found myself in a, in a lane that made you go right instead of straight. And yeah. That Where sucked. was that? Where was that? Yeah. Um, right on, uh, on Route 1. Um, you know where the Starbucks is? Yeah, uh, going towards the train station, right where it, um, right where it goes down. It, basically, they force you into one lane to go under the bridge, under the train, mm -hmm. uh, right there. Yeah, and that's a, a West Ave, I think, right? Is yeah, that sounds I right. That is. That truck driver was not happy when I caught up to him. <laughs> I have also been in dicey situations going under that bridge on a bike. Sweet. <laughs> At least two of us. All righty. Well, I don't think we can fix things in Darien, but. Uh, oh, no, no. I just meant the state. It's yeah. that, that, that's a big state road. <laughs> so maybe the state is doing something funky. Sorry. I did not okay. imply we could fix it. I did not mean to imply we could fix things in Darien. Okay. No. We have our hands full with Norwalk. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, thank you all. And uh, Tanner, social media? Yeah. So um, I've got some. Some promises made last month that were fulfilled, some that were not. Um, and some things that were not made last month that I did end up spending time on. Uh, so first of all, the Facebook page, um, pleased to report that engagement is up. Um, I've been posting um, some things directly related to Norwalk and some also some things that are more generally applicable, um, you know, articles from a couple different media organizations. Matt, I just noticed that you liked the page. Thank you very much. Um, if any of you have content that you would like to share with the masses, send it to me and I will forward it on. Um, one of the things that I posted was from the National Geographic about how bicycling has changed society. And it was a great article and I found it because Judd shared it with me. So um, if you see something interesting, something that uh, might be ideologically motivating for one reason or another to people to get them to walk and bike more or to be more involved, send it to me and I will put it on the Facebook page. Um, I want to give a special shout out, though, to um, the Norwalk Health Department. Thank you, Teresa, because they uh, re, uh, I was going to say retweeted, it's not Twitter. They shared our, our post about the walking survey, which generated a ton of engagement. Um, but um, in terms of cold hard numbers, our, um, the number of people that we reached this month is 200% more than the last month. Um, the amount of engagement is 125% more than last month. So we are on the up and up. Um, please Thank keep you, Tanner. with me so that I can keep putting it on Facebook. Um, as far as the website, a couple quick updates. Um, a little while ago, somebody asked that we add the Leave American Bicyclist link to our website. Um, so that has been done. Thank you, Teresa, for adding that, as well as a link to this Zoom meeting. Um, Matt, I'm not sh exactly sure how you found the Zoom meeting, but if it was more than a week ago, it wasn't on our website because it wasn't there. Now it is there, or at least a link to the city's um, list of all of their meetings. So those are the two updates for the website. Um, I have another update that's not directly related to social media, but it is kind of in the technology realm. Um, I, for a little while, I've been very interested in um, making it easier for us as a commission to collaborate. And um, one way that I think is obvious to anybody who's worked at a company in the last 20 years is with email. Um, we are, because of the Freedom of Information Act, we are not allowed to email a quorum of the commission because then that constitutes a meeting. And I guess we are allowed to do it if we do all the other formalities associated with a meeting. For example, publish an agenda ahead of time, uh, take notes, take attendance, and notify the public that we're having a meeting. And that seems, that's ridiculous to do if we want to send an email. 
So um, in practice, what we've been doing is just not sending the email, which makes us less productive. Um, I have been engaging with the city's legal department to find a way around this. And what I've learned is essentially there isn't. Um, it seems like what we will need to do is change the law. Um, I don't know to what extent that will be possible, but it's a Connecticut state law. So it's not like we have to go higher up than that, but we do have to go to the state level. Um, I have, I called the office of Senator Duff to just like try and start a conversation. I just got the answering machine, so I left a message. Um, I imagine that there are better channels to go through. So if we want to go through those channels, that would be great. I think that it would be fantastic if we, and you know, any public agency in the state of Connecticut could conduct business over email, because right now we can't. Um, any ideas for, for furthering that, Nancy or anybody else? Well, I, I think um, Mr. Duff and his staff are probably focused on tomorrow, so. That's probably true. <laughs> I, I don't imagine that, that ball to move very quickly, but. I well, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've always found, uh, well, Duff and it's actually his staff to be very responsive. Great. So you, you might wanna wait till maybe next week and to follow up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, try them again. Um, cause they may be able to give you some suggestions about how to proceed. Well, it could be that they don't even get to my message for the next week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll follow up again. Um, is there, go ahead, Judd. I, I assume the rules apply to any kind of communication platform, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can pull them up and read them to you, but that's my understanding. Any, basically any communication, um, to, oh, uh, it, that involves a quorum of the members. Right. And I don't even know what the definition of a quorum is. Is it a majority? Yes. Okay. So in our case, it would be four. Gotcha. Go ahead, Judd. No, I, I was just trying to think if there was some simple way around it, because I'm sure trying to get those rules changed is uh, no easy task. Sure. Um, I think, though, that uh, the, the generality and the general applicability of this like everybody uses email and it seems dumb that public agencies like ourselves can't do that. Um, to, to put a little more context here, um, what I propose, what I brought up with the legal department is um, what if we had a listserv that was hosted somewhere else? Like I'm very familiar with Google groups for obvious reasons. And so I propose that we establish a Google group that we could then, whenever we want to have a discussion as a commission, we do it on this listserv and then the listserv would host a, a copy of every conversation we've ever had and that would be accessible to the public. Like it, in terms of the spirit of the law, that seems very reasonable to me. And it seems like that, you know, that preserves the, the spirit of the freedom of information that the public can see what we're doing and hold us accountable, but also allow us to not have to shoehorn all of our activity into scheduled meetings. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I, I'm happy to, to take this and, and drive this. Um, if the right channel is to just um, for me personally to engage with Senator Duff's office, then I'm happy to do that. You know, the other, I did um, send you the contact information for the um, Freedom of Information Commission. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's probably worth contacting them. I mean, based on the the links, actually, I followed one of them, the, the FAQ, and then um, Mr. Spar, Jeff Spar from the legal department sent me that link as well. Um, it kind of breaks it down and and makes it quite clear that uh, you can only communicate as a quorum when you have a meeting and the meetings fall, you know, are pretty, it's pretty strict as to what constitutes a meeting. Like this obviously constitutes a meeting because we had an agenda and we made it available to the public and we have a quorum, et cetera. Et cetera. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, the intent of the law is to prevent uh, a, a body like us from talking amongst each other and pretty much deciding what we were going to do and then having a formal meeting where there's really no discussion. And, you know, we just say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're done. Um, and I know, cause I did take some uh, freedom of information training when I first, when, when we first became a commission. And I know that uh, one example that was given is back in the days when we used to meet in person, um, even if four of us talked in the parking lot after a meeting, that was not permitted because that would be a uh, quorum of the committee talking and would it would have constituted a, an unnoticed meeting. So I'm not sure you're going to do any better with the state commission, but it, it might be worth 
asking the question. Yeah. Um, at the very least, then, if Senator Duff's office asks, asks, like, have you talked to the actual office, I can see. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So um, any other input on that? Uh, all right. So the, um, the thing that I said I would do that I didn't do is talk about a budget for Facebook ads. Um, I would like to get the, the committee together, the subcommittee. In fact, um, Sam, are, are you available in the next couple of weeks to, to get together and talk about Facebook ads? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Sweet, okay, we'll do that offline. Um, but I think it's, um, it's encouraging that even without any ads that we've been able to grow engagement somewhat organically. Um, if you, I, I think actually this is a good time for a plug. Um, if any of you on the, this call have not yet gone to Facebook and liked our page, please do that. Um, and please um, share it, I, especially if you haven't ever before, just make a post on Facebook to your friends and say, hey, I'm on the, the bike walk commission. This is something that's important enough to me that I spend you know, however many hours of my month. Um, it would be nice if you guys would like it so that you can learn more, not only learn more about uh, biking and walking in general, but also be up to date on what's happening in Norwalk. Um, I think if we all did that, we could probably increase the number of people our, our audience, like our first degree audience by 30 to 50%. So that'd be awesome. You all could do that. That's all well, I got. Okay. Well, thank you very much for all your efforts, Tana. Good. It sounds like uh, you're having more successes than frustration. Oh, well, I don't know about that because there's certainly a lot of <laughs> Actually, a quick follow-up question about the, the zoning issue um, since we're here. The, uh, the conversation that you know the, the minimum conversation that i think uh needs to happen is about like you know whether i can get a, a zoning permit for this one use case um and that will be fine but i also i don't want people members of the public to have to resort to uh, talking to the head of of uh planning or the head of zoning because they have a personal connection to him in order to get something like this approved i think what we really need is a larger conversation around like how can we make it easy for people to to bike and and walk right and that's 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 the in a very general sense that is the conversation we're having but in this case i think it's around parking minimums um and i don't know what so, sort of conversations have taken place already um i've only been on the commission for a bit but um there's a lot of evidence out there that parking minimums are like bad for cities especially the center of cities um i don't know if that's a conversation that we need to have right now um but it's something that i would like to put on the radar it's Tanner, go ahead, Judd. Uh, no, I, it's come up at the pat in the past uh, at the parking authority. I don't think we've discussed it in this commission, but it has come up, and I've talked with Steve Kleppen about it. So, um, you know, we can talk a little more one on one about it. I know yeah, that, sounds good. Colin probably has a lot to offer about that too. Yeah, I, I, Tanner, I'd I'd ask you to go use um use that search, en search engine Bing and look for decoupling uh, parking from- Oh, uh, I love Bing. I use Polar. it all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, th there's, a, there's a lot more um, information now, uh, as you suggested, about uh, decoupling parking from rent rates, actually. So that's actually becoming fairly strong uh, out west in, um, in the middle of the country, I believe, and seeing more reports of that. And- um, and also a lot more uh, cities that are um, either trying it out in uh, like TOD zones or uh, in downtown cores with uh, relaxing uh, parking minimums in some way or providing parking maximums uh, as opposed to minimums. So you, you know, you're not allowed to provide more than X parking. Mm, interesting. Um, so that's, those are some things that you could look at. Yeah, it, it sounds also like- Whatever uh, I have too. It sounds like Colin and Judd and I should have a conversation where we share all the things that we've learned about this topic and then select like the things that we think are most salient for Norwalk and then bring them up at the next meeting. Sounds good. Sure. Judd, Colin? No, I, I mean, ultimately it's a, a zoning regulation as you know, and you, you have to convince all the zoning commissioners to make a change. And I know when we discussed it on the parking authority. Uh, you know, there was not a lot of enthusiasm for reducing parking minimums or eliminating them. So, mm -hmm. 
I, uh, I, it seems to me like this is a conversation that, that ideally would happen above that level, right? Where, uh, you know, if, if somebody at the, at the city level, ideally the mayor would, would say like in, in our community, like we don't, we don't prioritize, we, we don't build our community in the such that it's, uh, that driving is, is the best way to get everywhere, right? We're, we're going to do it differently because it's better for the city. And then the zoning decisions follow from that. So let, let's, uh, let's take the rest of this offline and come back and, and talk about some concrete stuff next month. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right, thank you. Um, the next is a strategic plan, uh, which is normally Deanna. Um, I think, and, and, and normally the, the middle month of the quarter is when uh, that committee reports back to the commission on the progress of our strategic plan. But since we just did that um, last month, uh, and this would be the middle month of the second quarter. I think we'll skip the second quarter and uh, report back in, in February for the third quarter, unless somebody has an objection. Okay, if oh. not, um, Teresa. Hi, sorry about that. It took me a second to get off of mute. Yeah. Um, Too many buttons. Yeah. So uh, update on in terms of Norwalker and and walking in general. Um, we've had some good conversations. Uh, I know Julia joined um, Tanner to discuss the social media, um, engaging community members in walking through social media and an online presence. Um, she and I are in the process of trying to map out um, how the health department sees the Norwalker program as being more than just the maps and um, and really just like a three-pronged approach of having this infrastructure and built environment work that you're all talking about, um, as well as the maps and then the community engagement piece. So um, really a comprehensive look at how to get more people walking um, and all of that under the umbrella of Norwalker um, so that it's not just the maps. but. Um, uh, right now, in addition to just working on getting some of the maps translated into Spanish, um, a lot of our efforts have been focused elsewhere. And so we haven't really um, been doing um, any of the community walks, obviously, um, but we're looking at potentially um, virtual walks. I know Julia and Tanner have been talking about ways to get people walking and um, e even if they're walking solo, get them to engage with other people about um, where they're walking in the city and and um, and how that people can enjoy even in cold weather months their walks around the community. So um, more to come on that. And um, and Audrey sent me uh, some materials around um, Oak Hills Park that we were trying at one point in the universe to turn into a Norwalker map. And now that that's on hold, we're trying to put up some information about um, about places folks can walk at Oak Hills Park as well. Um, and so we're just trying to get little bits and pieces up there and um, collaborate and get the word out on social media as well. Yeah, well, thank, thank you very much, Teresa. And in, in spite of uh, COVID uh, adding a whole lot more to your already very full plate, I'm glad that you're able to carve out some time for the, the Norwalker programs and walking in general. Okay. Um, we had no old business or and no new business. So at this point, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Can I ask a quick follow up question to Teresa? Really quick? Sure. Um, yeah, Teresa, thanks again um, for um, connecting us with um, Julia. We had a great conversation. Um, I don't know if, if it was ever, if we ever ran it by you, but we wanted to put Julia on the social media subcommittee. Did you catch wind of that? Um, I don't know. I don't think I did, but that's fine. That works for us. Cool. Um, and also you would, are welcome to join if you are interested um, or if you just want the health department represented by one person, that's totally fine too. Yeah, I think at this point we're trying to divide and conquer, but um, Julia and I talk a million times a day. So um, definitely if there's anything that um, we can collaborate on and, and help amplify the message, that would be great. Awesome. 
um, then we'll we'll work with her. Um, any reason that we wouldn't go ahead with uh, creating a group that you know shared between the health department and the bike walk commission about organizing uh, walking groups? That was something that we came up in our conversation with Julia, but we haven't done it yet. In part just because I forgot, but I remember now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I think that sounds great. I think, um, and maybe uh, there's a couple of people on the call from the pedestrian committee that came up in our, in our last meeting. And there was some question about, you know, um, is it, would it make more sense to attach that work to one of the existing pages rather than to drive people to an entirely new group? Um, but whatever works, we'll, we'll, I mean, I think the intent behind it, the objective is fantastic. And I think we're in a position to be able to do that. I don't know whether it's a separate group or part of, you know, events that are that are shared on the um, commission and the health department's pages. Um, however, you want it to be structured. That's way over my head in terms of understanding the best way to go about it on social media. But um, that was one thing that came up in the pedestrian committee meeting was it's so hard to generate a following and to get people to pay attention to the 30,000 different, you know, um, pages or groups. Um, so yeah, would it make more sense to have a separate group or to just attach it to one of the existing social media um, channels? But, but I do think that the, um, that the activities associated with it would be great. Cool. Yeah, that sounds like something we should bring up in our next uh, subcommittee meeting. Um, Audrey, would you or somebody from the pedestrian committee like to join in our next social media subcommittee meeting um, to talk about that topic particularly? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, great. We'll stay in touch. And I'll put together a meeting with me, Sam, Audrey, and Julia. We'll talk about that. That sounds terrific. Thank you. Otherwise, I'm good. I move to end the meeting. I have a okay, question. Thank you. I have a question for Audrey. Nancy. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to uh, go back to the Oak Hills Park, co Park concept and um, or grant. And uh, I, I missed how much the grant you're seeking was for. Yeah, it's, it's $1,500. Okay, and you said something about um, com compensating or providing transportation to people that to get them there. Yeah, and and that may actually we don't know yet. Some of that might come for free. Um, what we're looking at is uh, about five hundred dollars for materials to establish the the uh, pollinator friendly meadow. Mm -hmm. uh, about two hundred and fifty dollars for. Uh, doing some some level of outreach, public relations, that kind of thing, maybe printing up flyers, some some mm -hmm. uh, expenses associated with PR, and the bulk of it, which would be about 750 towards transportation. We don't know yet who who will provide transportation or who will need uh, transportation. It's um, I don't think we need to be uh, absolutely specific on this application. We mm -hmm. know we want to bring more of the community in and make sure that the underserved community is, uh, really gets a nod. So, um, you know, how, how that transportation works out, uh, still talking to a lot of people. The, the, it's coming up fast, so uh, I don't have all of the details yet, but uh, they're not asking for that level of detail anyway. So yeah. that's kind of how I was breaking it out. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the senior service, the senior center has, um, I believe, three buses um, that they use to bus people to various events. And generally, um, each participant pays a couple of bucks for the transportation. So I think, um, at least for the older population, we could probably underwrite the cost of the bus um, yeah, to get, get folks there. And I think one of the other ideas that was brought up um, at the pedestrian committee was talk to the transit district about whether the um, micro transit could be used and whether we would have to contribute a few bucks to them as well. Yeah, so we, we want to invite everybody to come into play and how, how that will work and what sections of town and uh, I know the housing authority and maybe even the health department can help us identify uh, some some of the families and some of the seniors that we want to make sure are invited. Okay, so um, Tanner moved to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Oh, I think Barbara beat you this time, Sam. <laughs> oh, sorry, Sam. <laughs> Okie doke. Um,
All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Well, thank you all. I think we had a, a good move, a good meeting, and um, there are uh, a lot of exciting things going on. I'm I'm feeling like uh, we're pretty much geared up since the lull uh, from last spring and early summer. So uh, I think it's it's all good stuff, and, and I thank you all for your active participation. And if you haven't already voted, vote tomorrow. Thank all right. You, thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Have a good night.